Hey scientists, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about viruses and cells test review. Okay, so I have my review sheet here and ready to go. You have access to yours in your Google Drive as well as in your Schoology account. So we're going to start with number one. What does RCDC stand for? And these are four of our structures that can be found in every cell. R is for ribosomes. Remember that they do nothing but make proteins. That is all that they love to do. C, our first one, is for cytoplasm. Okay, this is all the watery jelly stuff inside of your cell. This is what supports all of your organelles. D is for DNA. Okay, so they all have genetic material. It can be DNA or RNA. And our last C is for cell membrane. And I'm going to circle it because a, a cell membrane is there and it is in the outer area of your cell. For eukaryotic cells, it surrounds your cell and it controls what comes in and out of your cell, it regulates to maintain homeostasis. That's its number one goal, is to be in balance. Remember that homeostasis means to be in balance. Number two, which type of cell lacks? The word lacks means does not have. Which type of cell does not have any membrane-bound organelles? Remember, membrane-bound means it's inside your membrane. Okay, so which one keywords I have I have already bold faced them for you. Which type of cell does not have organelles? Organelles are little organs such as ribosomes, the Golgi, um, the endoplasmic reticulum. This one is going to be your prokaryotic cells. Remember that pro means no, does not have a nucleus. It does not have any fancy structures. What is the purpose of organelles? Okay, so what are they? Organelles, I'm going to put parentheses around this area. Organelles, and I'm going to underline the word organ. Little organs. The purpose of them are to maintain your cell, right? Maintain and allow your cell to do its everyday functions. and put it in parentheses daily. Okay, so it allows it, to, allows it to function every day of its little cell life. What are the structures found in viruses? So we have a few key structures in viruses. Okay, so I'm going to start looking here at my viral structure. Make myself a little arrow here, viral structures. We have a capsid. We have an envelope, and then we have genetic material, either RNA or DNA. Envelope, followed by your capsid. Capsid sounds a lot like capsule. Notice that my capsid contains my genetic material. Okay, so my capsid surrounds that RNA or DNA, depending on which type of virus it is. Okay, remember that viruses are extremely specific. Viruses are specific to their host. Okay, uh, they are specific to whichever type of cell they specialize in attacking. Okay, so if they require DNA, then your virus must have DNA. 
If it requires RNA, your virus must have RNA. Lytic cycle. Lytic cycle blank kills host cell. An example is this. Okay, so what's important to know about lytic, it's a short word. Okay, lytic is quick and it immediately kills my host cell. Okay, so it immediately gets to work here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Move this down. Okay, it immediately kills my whole cell. Symptoms are going to show up very quickly. An example is going to be influenza. Oops. AKA the flu. Okay, so this is a very quick moving cycle. Symptoms usually show up um, as little as or anywhere from three to seven days. If you've ever been sick with the flu, you know that normally you can recover from the flu anywhere uh, between three days to uh, 10 days, depending on how good your immune system is. Number six, the virus does blank blank kill a host cell in the lysogenic cycle. An example is blank. So lysogenic, you may have heard me say this in class, lysogenic is a long cycle. Lysogenic, long cycle. Your virus does not immediately kill my host cell. For lysogenic, remember that it wants to integrate its DNA, we'll say uh, genetic material. I lied, I'm just gonna write RNA or DNA. It wants to integrate its genetic information into your host cell's DNA so that every time your cell goes through cell division, it's going to take that viral DNA with it. Okay, so an example here is HIV. HIV can remain dormant, that means not active without symptoms, uh, up to eight years. Number seven, B cells. Oh, these are antibodies. These, uh, these are, this is your main defense or part of your defense here. You have B cells, you have helper T cells. B cells produce antibodies once they have encountered a pathogen. Remember that a pathogen is any type of infectious uh, agent. It can be a bacteria, a virus, um, or fungus, anything that causes you illness. By doing this, they can fight the illness faster if they encounter that particular pathogen again. Which body system is responding? Well, I just mentioned this uh, about the flu. This is your immune system. Number eight, pro means no. Pro means no what? This one should be easy. No nucleus. No nucleus. Oh, I thought that was a different pink. It's not. Let's try this one. Think you for you do. You do have a nucleus. Okay, eukaryotic cells, they have uh, organelles, they have a nucleus, and they are also much larger than prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are like bacteria, they're very small, and they do not have any organelles. Their genetic material is just floating around, doesn't have a nucleus. Number nine, what are three pieces to cell theory? So I need my three pieces to cell theory. Number one, all cells. come from pre-existing cells. Okay, so this is important. All cells come from pre-existing cells. So you cannot have a cell just magically show up out of thin air. That's not the way it works. Okay, in order for you to have a new cell, it must have come from a cell that already existed. Okay, so that is the only way for you to get another cell.
it, you have to have a starting cell to begin with. Okay. Number two. Cells are the basic unit of life. We had talked about that as a characteristic uh, for living things. You have to have at least one cell in order to be um, a living thing, and cells are the basic units of life. And then um, last, all living organisms are made up of cells. Okay, and if you're not sure uh, where to get this information, your pieces to the cell theory or your cell structure, make sure that you are checking out your notebook. Hopefully you are keeping up with your notebook, but these notes are your cell structure and introduction, introduction to cells notes. Number 10, I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this up. Number 10, a bacterial infection can be treated with antibiotics, but a virus cannot. I'm gonna circle that, underline it, exclamation point it. Okay, a virus cannot be treated with antibiotics, and I will tell you why. We're going to split this word antibiotics into two different words. I have anti, and then I have biotic. Anti means no, right? Anti is against. Biotic is a living thing. So it is going to kill living things. Bacteria are living things. A virus is not a living thing. Therefore, it is not treatable with antibiotics. Number 11, a blank is an organelle that is filled with digestive enzymes to break things down in your cell. Ooh, I had mentioned this one was a personal favorite of mine. This is a lysosome. A lysosome is an organelle that is filled with digestive systems, or excuse me, digestive enzymes to break things down in your cell. Lysosome, lysosome. Number 12, Robert Hooke is known for blank and looking at blank through a microscope to make his discovery. Okay, so scientist Robert Hooke, he was an English scientist. He was able to uh, use a compound microscope to look at a thin slice of cork, and it looked like thousands of little tiny empty chambers. He had compared them to where, um, to where uh, monks lived, and he called these chambers cells. So let's see how this fits. Robert Hooke is known for blank and looking at blank through a microscope. Well, I know that he looked at cork and here is a picture right here. This is a, um, a little piece of cork under a microscope. He is known for uh, cells. He is credited with using the word cells. Number 13. This organelle is known as the powerhouse of my cell, and it has its own DNA. Okay, um, in the Ed puzzle we had seen from endosymbiotic theory, okay, that mitochondria are believed to have been um, picked up by our cells, they, but they had been, or they are previously thought to have existed on their own. Okay, so powerhouse of the cell, this is the mighty mitochondria. Okay, this is where all of your uh, cellular respiration occurs, where you make energy for your cells, and that is in the usable form of ATP. Number 14, which cell organelle regulates what comes in and out and helps maintain homeostasis and overall cell health? This is your cell membrane. that homeostasis means to be in balance okay you don't want too much water in your cell because it can lice or burst 
You don't want too little in your cell because now it's dehydrated and uh, that's not healthy. You don't want too much sugar in your cell. That's not good. And you don't want too little sugar inside your cell because now I can't make enough energy ATP. 15, injecting a person with a weakened virus is called a blank or called blank. This stimulates the immune system to attack the virus if it ever enters the body again. This is vaccination. Okay, remember that vaccines. Vaccines are you receiving a weakened form of your virus. And that is what's going to uh, tell your system, your immune system, hey, immune system, here, take these uh, proteins from the weakened virus, from the vaccine, and create antibodies. Okay, make me some antibodies, please. So if I ever see it again, I can fight it quickly to where I do not uh, experience those symptoms again, or it helps me overcome that illness way faster than my first time, my initial time uh, becoming infected um, or becoming sick with that pathogen. Next page, 16. The H1N1 virus, influenza, commonly known as the blank, has vaccines commonly available during this time of year. This is the flu. 17, identify the differences. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. I bolded it for you, but we're looking for differences between a pro and a U, and what cell structures are shared between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So I wanna look for differences in these two boxes, but I want to look at what they share in the middle. So this is like a Venn diagram. Okay, so prokaryotes. What is special about prokaryotes? Remember, they do not have a nucleus. No nucleus. No organelles. No membrane-bound organelles. Okay. Uh, prokaryotes do have a cell wall, and they have a cell membrane. Eukaryotes do not have, uh, or actually animal cells don't have uh, cell walls, but your plant cells do, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, let's see both. Oh, before I get to both, I should probably do eukaryotes. Okay, eukaryotes. They have a nucleus. They do have organelles. Oh, these are larger in size. Okay, these are smaller in size. Uh, these are uh, bacteria. Okay, these are plants and animals. That's a horrible and sign. Okay, uh, plant and animal cells. What do they both have in common? They both have genetic material. So they both have DNA. They both have a cell membrane. Remember both, remember R, C, D, C. Okay, so I've uh, used D for DNA. I've used a C for cell membrane. Cytoplasm and then R for ribosomes. There we go. Define inhibit. I'm gonna write this one in red because to inhibit means to not allow. Not allow. Does not happen. Okay. So something to stop, stimulate. We saw the word stimulate earlier when it was talking about your immune system. To stimulate means to like to activate it, to get a reaction from it. So I'm going to say to to activate, to cause a reaction to. Okay. Uh, so, for example, when I get hungry, okay, that is a that is a stimulus. 
so when I experience hungry, it's going to cause uh, hunger. It's going to cause me to go want to get something to eat, right? So it's causing me to react. Whenever I receive a vaccine, it stimulates my immune system. It causes them or activates them to attack it, and it causes me to now uh, have anti start the creation of antibodies against that pathogen. 20, endosymbiotic theory states that blank and blank in today's eukaryotic cells were once separate prokaryotic microbes. It's evidence that eukaryotic cells came once from prokaryotic pieces. Okay, uh, so we have some, we have uh, an idea for endosymbiotic theory. Okay, so endosymbiotic theory, endo means into, think endo for into. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, endo, into, into, symbiotic, right, symbiosis. We had talked about mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. Okay, so this is a relationship. So we are looking for a relationship here. So it says our... Our symbiotic, endosymbiotic theory states that blank and blank in today's eukaryotic cells were once separate prokaryotic microbes. So once upon a time, these things existed by themselves, not belonging to our cell. It provides evidence that eukaryotic cells came from prokaryotic pieces. Okay, um, so... Uh, Mitochondria is one. And chloroplasts is second. Uh, chloroplasts also have their own DNA. And they have their own ribosomes. Uh, so these are the two organelles that are part of the endosymbiotic theory. 21, which organelle ships and packages materials like a UPS store service inside your cells? Okay, so shipping and packaging things, uh, that's your uh, Golgi apparatus. Uh oh, ran out of room. Golgi apparatus. 22, what is the role of the ER? Okay, so what does your endoplasmic reticulum do? Okay, so your rough ER has ribosomes. That is the site of protein synthesis. Okay, so that's where I'm going to be making proteins for my cells. My endoplasmic reticulum is uh, similar in shape. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, for the endoplasmic reticulum, we're going to say, uh, site of protein synthesis. Oops. I'm going to put R-E-R -E for rough E-R. 22, some eukaryotes like plants contain blank, which has a green color, and is found inside a chloroplast. Ah, hopefully I left myself a big enough space here. This is chlorophyll. That's two L's, chlorophyll. It is involved in the process of blank, which allows your organism to make its own food. Making its own food, that's an autotroph. Through sunlight, okay, this must be photo synthesis photosynthesis 24 a virus is not a living thing it needs a blank to reproduce to attach to a host it uses this okay a virus is not a living thing it needs a host so it's going to use your your host cells a machinery in order to reproduce and machines uh, the word machine means something that enables you to do something else right so i can have like a computer is a machine to process information for me okay so your cell has machinery to make 
new cells, right? It has the, the ability, it has all the things that it needs for it to go through cell division. Your virus does not. So it needs this host in order to hijack that and reproduce. To attach to the host, it uses projections or glycoproteins. I got cut off. Projections, islands. Okay, those are all of these. I had mentioned these. These are like keys. Okay, because your viruses are specific to the cells that they that they invade. All of these projection, all of these keys must fit those host cells. If they cannot fit, they cannot gain access. 25, this organelle synthesizes proteins. Synthesize means to make. What am I making? Proteins. Oh, those must be ribosomes. Blank and blank are cell structures that can be found in an animal, but not a plant. Hmm. So I need two organelles or structures, cell structures that can be found in an animal, but not a plant cell. Okay, well, I know I can find vacuoles. I know I can find DNA in an animal. What do I have that I cannot find in a plant cell? Let's go ahead and think about that one for a little bit. And then 27. A blank is a very is very large in a plant cell and is used to store food. Okay, so storage here, storage already used. To, I need another one. How about this one? Storage is key here for vacuole. Vacuole is very large in a plant cell, and it's smaller in animal cells. Twenty-eight. What is the purpose of projections on a virus? So we had just spoken about this, projections on a virus. Are specific to its host cell, uh, to its own host cells, uh, carbohydrate chains uh, that are outside of the cell membrane to gain entry that's a y okay so your host cell on its membrane has its own little projections okay and these are carbohydrate chains and these are used to recognize uh friendlies okay so if you can have something that fits in here your cell says okay you have the key to my house you have the key to get in you must be a friendly so you can come on in so if your virus projections can fit into these little receptors that's how it gains entry into your cell okay so projections on a virus are specific to its host cell to gain entry this is how it gets into your cell okay if it does not fit it cannot enter. Okay, let's go back to 26. Okay, so for 26, lysosomes and centrioles are cell structures that can be found in an animal but not a plant. Remember that lysosomes are filled with digestive enzymes so they can break things down inside your cell. Centrioles, centrioles are the, uh, the churro tube looking things. And they are only used for cell division. Okay, so they guide your genetic material through cell division during cell division in animal cells, but not plant cells. All right, scientists, that's it for our viruses and cells review. Thank you for watching. Remember to study. Cahoots are available. And I'll see you.